In our last video, we covered the beginning of your argumentative essay, and we went over in detail how your introduction starts with a hook to draw your reader in, and how it gives them context so that they know what the issue is about, and then provides your claim in a thesis so that they know what side you are taking in that argument. In that video, I compared the introduction to the head of a hypothetical giant robot. Your introduction is your control center. It's the brain of the operation. It dictates how the rest of your essay will function. And if it is not operational, the rest of your essay will fall flat. If the intro is the head and the brain, then the body of your argumentative essay is the body of our hypothetical giant robot. This makes up the bulk of what we'll be saying, what we'll be writing. Your intro will be short, like a paragraph or maybe a couple of them. Your body will be much longer because it houses the details you need to get across to convince the reader that you are correct. So let's kick this off with a simple start because overall the body of an argumentative essay is pretty simply structured. So let's start with note number one. Your body of your argumentative essay should be composed of three reasons that support your claim or your thesis. So let's rewind back to where we discussed banning cell phones in previous videos. It's a topic that comes up pretty frequently in school, so it's a good topic to discuss for illustrative purposes. Let's say for purposes of this video that I am going to be on the side that says it's a good idea to go ahead and ban cell phones from schools. I don't necessarily 100% agree with that topic, but sometimes in argumentative writing, you have to play the devil's advocate and be on the side that you disagree with. So I've got three points written out here. Number one, cell phones are distracting. They cause students of all ages to be unable to focus. Point number two, cell phones pose a risk of allowing bullying. Students use cell phones to engage in cyberbullying, and students without nice phones might feel left out. Point number three, cell phones are expensive and their presence in a school environment could lead to theft up to misdemeanor and felony rates in many states. While none of those are foolproof reasons, I think they're pretty common arguments that the side against having cell phones in a school environment are going to bring up. Now I want to look at both sides of this argument. So if we go back to our examples from last week, we saw some examples in paragraph form of somebody writing an argumentative essay with the opposite opinion that cell phones should be allowed to be kept in schools. In this author's first reason why they believe cell phones should be kept in schools, they start out by saying that safety is the major concern of parents who want their children to be able to contact them quickly and easily should they find themselves in a perilous situation. So their first point is that cell phones are good to have because of safety reasons and because parents want to be able to contact students. They follow that up. Their second reason in their next paragraph says, there are many situations, particularly here in California, where children might be potentially in danger and could use the phone to get help. They go on to talk about earthquakes and things like that in their evidence. Their next point is that they're necessary or that cell phones are necessary to help with real world emergencies. It's definitely similar to the first point, but I think it is distinct enough to work. Their point number three says, Everyone carries a cell phone these days with him or her. Kids will still bring their phones regardless of the ban. In this point, they kind of just bring up the fact that cell phones are a part of everyday life. They essentially are saying that it's a, impossible to fight against the tide. There's not necessarily a concrete way to actually ban something as small as a cell phone when somebody could still keep them hidden. So now we've got two sides side that believes that cell phones should be banned from schools and a side that believes that that is basically impossible and not a good idea. We have two giant robots ready to clash. Both have opposing views and have stated there are many reasons why their side is the best and how they're different. How do we ultimately determine who will win in an argumentative essay against an argumentative essay? The answer to that is that basically the side with the best evidence wins. Note number two, you must support your three reasons with strong evidence. And note number three, evidence can come in several different forms. Your teacher or professor may be more specific on what you can or can't use for an essay, but essentially evidence can come from these different things. They can come from anecdotes or short stories used to make a point. Evidence can come from quotes a reference to something someone has said 
or to common expressions in everyday life. Evidence can come from personal experiences, examples from your own life that can be used in your essay. Evidence can come from citations, from articles, books, websites, etc. Evidence can come from examples, specific examples that can be used to prove a point. And evidence can also come from statistics, using numeral data such as percentages, surveys, and numbers to support your claim. The rule tends to be that, note number four, evidence that comes from experts is typically considered the strongest. By experts, I'm referring to people who study your topic as part of their job. A researcher who writes a scholarly article about the effects of cell phone use in school may provide quotes, statistics, and other data that can be extremely useful for your argument. What they say is probably going to come across as more impactful or more true than just what some random person says, or even what you say. Now, moving on from that a little bit, if you look back at those three arguments the side against banning cell phones had that we looked at just a minute ago, you can see their evidence just below their reasoning in each paragraph. Let's look at that real quick. If you wanna pause the video and read through these, this would be a good time. Kinda of look again at those boxes that have the evidence highlighted. Now, after going through those and reading their evidence, it brings me to our last point for today and for this video. Note number five says, after you give your evidence, make sure to explain why that evidence matters. You're essentially giving more context by doing this. You're explaining your beliefs. It's important, of course, to give the evidence. That's the most important part. But you want to make sure to include a short blurb of you illustrating or saying why that evidence backs up your point. So essentially, those are the rules for the body of your argumentative essay. You write three reasons that are going to support your side. You back up each of those three reasons with evidence. And you support your evidence by explaining why it matters. And that's pretty much it, at least for now. Next time, we're going to go over something called the counterargument, also called the counterclaim. We have to end the body with something called the counterargument, a way to kind of get back at the other side and acknowledge that they have a point, but then say that their point is wrong. We'll go into detail on that next time. Thank you and have an awesome day.